we've released a new capability that we're calling Green Software Insights that automatically analyzes application source code and identifies ways to make the software uh, more sustainable. And it does that uh, by looking for specific patterns in the code. We call them green deficiencies. That, that's the name that we've come up with for the patterns. And then when we find them, we capture that information, we record it, and ultimately we're rolling that up to a score that we call the green impact score. And that leads me to what you see here on the screen now. We have a new tile that is now part of the home screen of Cast Highlight. So in addition to what we've had for years, software health, cloud readiness, open source safety, now we have a new tile called green impact. And this is a new category of insights that are built into the product. Green Impact is the name of the score that essentially is measuring how green, if you will, or how sustainable a software application is. It's calculated on a scale of 0 to 100, and it's calculated at both the portfolio level for all the applications, and it's also calculated down at the individual application level. If I click on the Green Impact tile, that's going to bring me to one of our portfolio level dashboards. It's called the Portfolio Advisor for Green. And what this dashboard is doing is it is automatically looking for specific characteristics based on a mathematical model of applications and recommending some specific actions to take if your priority is to improve your green impact score. And it does that by automatically segmenting and prioritizing some applications that meet certain criteria. So we have four different segments that we have developed for this portfolio advisor for green. It's not going to segment every single application in the portfolio necessarily. It's going to look for certain applications that meet certain criteria. So for example, one group is quick wins. So these are applications that represent a great opportunity to improve the green impact score, and they're going to require less effort. We'll talk a little bit more about that effort in a moment. So that's what quick wins are. Rising stars, these are similar. These are applications that will improve the green impact score but they're uh, business critical applications and they probably will require a little bit more effort. So we call them rising stars because they're not going anywhere anytime soon. They're very important to the organization, but they're gonna require a little bit more effort. Role models is a third category. Those are pretty self-explanatory, right? These are applications that are already doing really good from a green impact perspective. So these would be applications to take a closer look at if you're trying to see what certain teams are doing or, or the practices that they're using. And then finally, we have a fourth category called long-term investments. These are applications that have both a low green impact score and they're going to require a lot of effort to remove those green deficiencies, but the payoff will be pretty significant in the long run. So those are the four segments similar to our other portfolio advisors. Uh, we have one for cloud, we have one for open source. You can see the list of applications down below here. You can change the segment if you choose. You can see why something was put into a certain category by simply clicking on it, and you'll see the, the formula that's used and the points it got in the different segments. And you can actually see each of the applications here in this bubble chart. This chart, we have the effort on the vertical axis, and we have the impact on the horizontal axis. So that's kind of a quick overview of this dashboard. This is all based on these things that I've been talking about called green deficiencies. So if I come over to this tab here, I'll see here's the list of green deficiency patterns, the specific code level patterns that we are looking for throughout the portfolio of applications to ultimately calculate the green impact score. We'll identify what technology we're finding it in, we'll count how many occurrences that occur, we'll calculate an effort that would be required to remove it, and then we'll show which applications uh, actually have that green deficiency. So if we take one, for example, let's drill down to the application level now. I'll see that this deficiency is in three applications, so I'm gonna pick one of these. So here now I'm down at an application called Mando. The green impact score is actually similar to cloud, how we do cloud readiness. The green impact score here for this application is very good, it's 84.3. It's actually based on an average between a survey score and a scan score. So we do add some survey questions that are optional, but very useful to add additional context and simply improve the green impact score calculation by incorporating some more qualitative information into the calculation that we can't determine through an automated code scan. 
So you can see what those questions are here. Obviously, we answered them all pretty good for this application. That's why the answers are all in green. If you look at some other applications, you'll see some orange and red here, meaning that those answers are negatively impacting the, um, the, the green impact score calculation. But what's more interesting is the green impact scan. So again, similar to other areas of the Cast Highlight product, you see the list of patterns. In this case, we're talking about green deficiency patterns. So for example, here's an example of a green deficiency pattern, avoid nested loops, right? So that's something that's going to use excess compute resources, uh, ultimately resulting in more energy consumption. Uh, we found it in the C-sharp code. We found 349 occurrences of this. And then we automatically calculate an estimate on how much effort that's going to be required to remove that. Now, this effort estimate works very similarly to our cloud blocker effort estimate in that you have the ability to customize the effort estimate units. So if you think that a certain team can do this work in more or less time, you can alter the effort associated with this specific pattern. And I could show you where that's done. Uh, if you click on the number of occurrences, you'll actually see the location of where they all occur. And then if you want to understand a little bit more about why this is considered a green deficiency, you can click on this question mark. And that brings up much more detail about why this is a deficiency, what the recommendations are, how we're actually looking for it in each of the different technologies, you know, how we actually notice it and find it. Uh, so that you can go through and make a decision on how you want to potentially remediate or address that particular deficiency. We also added the green impact score to the trends dashboard. So if you come over to the trends dashboard and click on green impact, you could actually monitor progress over time. So you could see here of the uh, of all the applications that we have analyzed for green, we have hope you know, most of them going up. We have a couple going down, one that's you know, up and then down. So you could kind of monitor progress and trends of the green impact score over time. And then actually I did mention one last thing is uh, if you wanted to manage that effort calculation in the manage portfolio screen, you have this manage green effort area. And here by technology, you could see each of the green deficiency patterns that we're looking for. And you could go ahead here and manually change the effort estimate. You could select whether that's minutes, hours, person days, et cetera, save that. And then that will recompute your effort across all of the corresponding dashboards throughout the product that use that effort calculation that I was showing. We are basically helping you know, organizations identify ways to make their software more sustainable and allow them to track their progress over time and show that they're making an improvement.